Hi, welcome to Make It Better Than Yourself. Today I'm Better Than Yourself, fermented onions. I've seen a lot of recipes on the internet for pickled onions. They'll do like pickled red onions and um, different varieties on that. Basically just, you know, chop up some onions, add sugar, salt, and vinegar. And I want to go a little variation from that. I want to do fermented onions so they'll be probiotic, they'll be good for you, as well as just delicious. So basically it's pretty simple. Just grab a sack of onions. I'm gonna go with these. I just bought these in the produce department. These are just, you know, your run-of-the-mill store-bought yeah, storage onions. These are sweet onions. But, um, you know, not a lot to do here. Basically what we're gonna do is just slice these up and then brine them as usual and leave them in, uh, in the brine solution for a couple of days. So, what I'm interested in though is the way that we cut them. What you want to do is when you cut these up, you want to think about your finished product. Think about what you're going to want to end up with for the product in the jar that you're going to be putting on tacos, putting in salads, putting on hot dogs, putting on anything you want. I mean, these are good. Just, you know, pick them out of the jar and have them with the beer for that matter. But these are awesome with fish and chips, pickled onions, uh, fermented onions. These are awesome. Let's, um, let's look at the, uh, what it takes to cut these up and, and break these down so we can get them packed into a jar and brined. Basically what I want to do is just to cut them in half and then we're going to do a, a little move where we cut off the top just kind of in a flat motion and then cut the root end off at an angle. From there, you pop the skin off, take the, just the outer paper off Next move is we're gonna French the onion. So basically what I wanna do is take and do kind of a, cut the, cut the radius of the onion over the, over the course of the onion. So bring your fingers back. You don't wanna cut your, into your fingers. A lot of times when you're slicing things, you can use your, your knuckle as a guide here and just sort of bring your, your knuckle back as you bring the knife around. So if you wanna make sure you get nice even cuts, keep your fingers tucked, keep your, your fingertips out of there. Just you're rubbing against your knuckle, not your fingertips. And just come around, nice even cuts. R rotate it down. Start your little radius cuts again. Get your knuckle in there if you need a little extra guide, a little extra guidance. And there you go. So grip your onion and just basically make a claw. You know, grab it like that and see what you've got. You've got these these knuckles here, and we can get the knife. So we're just sort of rubbing the side of the knife against our knuckle and then we can use that as our guide to get into this onion without getting into our fingertips. Let's get the root off. Let's get the top off. See what I did there? It's a nice slide that get down against my knuckles. When you drop your knife, sharp side away. So just hold your knife like that, take your other fingers and just wrap them around the handle of the knife. That is an awesome knife grip. And then you can just start into your onion. So again, an angle to take the root off, straight chop to do the, the top, peel off the paper. Clean off your board and we repeat. Pinch your knife, get in there, and then just take your, take your wedges out. And we're just going for Eventually we'll be going for speed, but right now we just want to make sure that all our onion slices are the same thickness. We want just a nice even vegetable chop. Whenever we do something like this, we want to make sure everything's the same size. Nice thing I've found too about slicing onions, you've seen me slice onions in the past and I've fallen out of it and I haven't been able to finish chopping. I just sharpened this knife and this, these, granted these are sweet onions, they're not, you know, the real sour type of onions that, you know, are really going to make you cry, but I'm finding with a really sharp knife, I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered. You can hear I'm not sniffling, I'm not congested, I'm not crying. I'm uh, actually doing pretty well with the, uh, the onions today because my knife is so sharp. Alright, 
I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the rest of these onions, then we'll get back to the fermenting. Once you've got your jar full of onions once, uh, that you've so carefully chopped, you can go ahead and, and brine them and ferment them like this, or you can think about maybe augmenting the flavor a little bit. Add a little bit of uh, spices, make these a little bit more interesting. A couple things that go nice with onions, um, brown mustard seeds, black peppercorns, whole, I'm just gonna, I'll put in, you know, maybe half a dozen, or maybe even like some allspice berries, something like that. I think, I did mustard seeds last time, I think maybe just uh, half a dozen of the allspice berries, and uh, I don't know, half a dozen, ten peppercorns, and shake them down in there. These are gonna have a tendency to float, so what I wanna do is get them down towards the bottom of the jar, and they won't float up. Remember, when we're fermenting, anything that rises above that brine that we pour in is gonna be a little island that the mold can land on and make little mold islands, so that's bad. So we wanna make sure that anything that's gonna be a problem, like that peppercorn, is down underneath the vegetables. From here, we want some kind of a weight. Think about, this is just a little jelly jar that you can put down in there. You've seen me use the pickle pebbles, um, or even just like a plastic bag you can fill with water and shove down into there. Just something to keep the vegetables below the brine. The brine, of course, the brine. Let's take a look at the brine. My brine recipe always stays the same. I do two quarts of warm water, and then my favorite uh, sea salt here, I do three tablespoons of sea salt to two quarts of water. Give that a little stir. This is probably going to be too much. You can, you can, you know, half this recipe maybe if you're just doing a smaller jar. But, so you know what you would have, a quart of water to a tablespoon and a half of sea salt. Um, let's talk about these ingredients real quickly. This water, I live back in the middle of the woods as you can tell from some of these videos, looking out the windows in the background. So I've got a private well and this is water from 400 feet below the surface of the ground so I know it's nice and clean. There's no chlorine, there's no fluorine, there's no chloramine, there's none of that stuff that the city puts in the water. It's just, it's just nice clean water. You can use spring water, you can use RO water, you can use filtered water. Buy yourself a Brita if you've got nasty water at, uh, you know, in your house or your apartment and, and filter it. Try to do something to get that, the chlorine and all those, um, those chemicals out of the water. Because they really don't, they don't lend anything to the taste of the ferment and they really, they're bad for the bacteria. Well, they're bad for you, but <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're not good for the bacteria that you're trying to foster. So you want nice clean water, you want a nice pure salt. This is a brand that I recommend to everyone. This is just Selena Naturally. Um, there's a link down below if you want to grab a, a bag off of Amazon. But this is just nice Celtic um, gray salt. It's got lots of uh, minerals you can see now that I've dissolved it, all the stuff that's in the water. That's awesome, lots of, you know, lots of nice minerals, lots of, uh, things going on that'll really, you know, make your, your bacteria happy and your ferment. So, essentially, you know, use gray salt, use um, pink salt, Himalayan salt is nice, um, is mined out of the, you know, the Himalayan mountains, but just don't use iodized salt. Again, kind of like the chlorine, that iodine, those, those metals, those chemicals in, your, in our food products are going to kill the bacteria that we're using to try to make a, a healthy ferment. So I've got, yeah, it's a little bit, didn't dissolve, I'm not gonna sweat it. But let's get enough of this brine in there to cover up the onions, and you can see they're starting to float up. I'm just gonna stick this little jar down in there, and hopefully we're gonna get everything down below the surface of the water. Looks like there's a couple things floating up. This isn't gonna work. All right, plan B. Ziploc bag, some more of our brine. Good thing we made lots, right? And look what I can do. I can take, maybe not that much, I can take this plastic bag and kind of fit it down in there and shove everything below the surface of the brine, which is now way up here. And so as this ferments, it's, what's gonna happen? It's gonna make bubbles, it's gonna make carbon dioxide, those bacteria and yeasts that are naturally on the onions are gonna ferment the carbohydrates and the fructose and all the sugars 
that are in the onions make lactic acid and carbon dioxide. So you're going to see little carbon dioxide bubbles rising and they'll get out, they'll slip along the edges of the bag here, but no oxygen can get in. All the things that are bad that could potentially go wrong with this ferment come from the air. And that's really what we're trying to prevent is anything that is an aerobic bacteria is going to cause a problem with this. Give you off tastes, going to give off flavors, and by doing this you're going to keep the oxygen out and the carbon dioxide can get out of the jar. So you're not going to have any problems with this thing exploding like a bomb because of the carbon dioxide buildup in it. So this is ready. This is done. We've got our flavors in there. We've got our brine in there. We've got our onions in there. I'm going to put this in the cabinet for about a week, maybe even two weeks. Onions can really, kind of like sauerkraut, can go a long time. Some of your, maybe your dill pickles or some of the other things we fermented on this channel, really you want to taste after a couple of days. These onions have a lot of um, sulfur compounds in them that really just need a good long ferment. So I'm probably going to let these go about two weeks before I even taste them. And then after that, we'll have a look at them. See you then. All right, so it's been a couple of weeks now since we um, cut up our, our onions for fermenting. And, oh, this is cool. Let me zoom in on this for you. When I give this jar a little shake, you can see the bubbles rising up. That's a good sign that fermentation is still occurring, or has occurred anyway. And as these bubbles come up, we know that the lactic acid bacteria are giving off carbon dioxide and lactic acid, which is going to pickle our, our vegetables. And as this fermentation continues, it creates more and more acid, which is going to preserve and make better in taste our onions. So, here, let's get this bag out of here. I'm looking for mold. I'm looking for any little blue, green, red, orange bits. And there's nothing really on this sack that is going to get me too excited. I'm going to give it a quick smell. And that, that strong onion that makes me cry that everyone laughs at, is gone. That onion smell, it, completely, completely absent. I can smell the, um, the spices that I put in here, which is nice. And, mmm, beautiful crunch. That The onion taste is almost gone. The salt has really diminished. And let's get some stainless steel. Remember my, my mantra, always stainless steel in the, in the kitchen, in the fermenting kitchen. But, this is great. I'm going to push this back down a little bit, back down into the lactic acid and brine. A little stir. Well, I'm trying to get down into the jar and see where we are further below. And these are awesome. I'm really happy with these. I think I'm having an onion sandwich for lunch. They almost taste like the, the little cocktail olives that you put in a in a martini. Well, or I guess would it be a gimlet? But you know, these are delicious. This, I, I'm really happy with the way these onions fermented and came out. And so at this point, just a plastic lid. Really, I don't like using those metal lids, the, you know, the, the, the rings and, and the canning tops. I don't like that metal. This is a fairly strong acid. I mean, it's not, you know, going to eat your face or anything, but it's, it's better just to use plastic and glass to store your lactic acid ferments. But this is delicious. These will be great on hamburgers. I'm going to toss some of these on a salad. Um, maybe just to spread out on a piece of buttered bread. These are delicious. These will go into the fridge for as long as it takes me to eat them, probably the rest of the day. <laughs> but no, honestly, they'll last months at this point. These are well preserved. If you want, you can leave them out. You don't have to put them in the refrigerator. These are you know, pickled and preserved. They're fermented. So there's really nothing more that can go wrong with them other than maybe leaving them open. Um, if you do leave them in the pantry, give them a stir once in a while just to kind of, you know, keep what is exposed to air. Um, you know, not always the same bit of onions, but, you know, just, or maybe just take them out and give them a shake. The, um, the white stuff on the bottom of the jar that you see, the, you know, you'll see like a sediment. Don't worry about it. It's, it's scientifically, it's flocculated yeast cells. What that is, is just dead yeast that, you know, in the course of the ferment, some yeasts were involved. They gave it their all and did what they could to the ferment and progressed the flavor and the, and the you know, the preservation technique and died and left their, their corpses at the bottom of the jar. They really are pretty tasteless. Easier just to leave them on the bottom of the jar and the dishwasher will take care of them when it's done. But, no, this can go in the fridge and uh, 
enjoy. Enjoy your next ferment here with the fermented onions. Thanks for watching, you guys, and uh, enjoy the other fermenting videos. Be sure to subscribe. Talk to you soon.